So, um, so anyway, Dran Expert, let's just cover that real quick. I'll give a brief introduction. That is our new um, power and energy logger, but it's also a PQ detector as well. Um, it's low cost, um, uh, about $1,500 uh, in the United States, but check out your local seller depending upon where you are for your price. So it's really two instruments in one. It's an accurate three-phase bi-directional power and energy logger, but it also has parallel power quality detection capabilities. As you can see on the right, this is a dip that occurred. Uh, it can record the wave shape, the RMS shape of a dip or a swell. It does not have transient capabilities. It has no wave shape capabilities when it comes to power quality. So this, these, these capabilities are not to replace our higher end instruments, our HDPQ products or others, but it does give you basic PQ detection capabilities. So if you see PQ issues, then you can go get one of our, our, our higher end products to go actually troubleshoot and diagnose these products. So just a brief review of the features and then I'll turn it over to Thurman who'll do a demonstration. So it is a power and energy logger. It has direct connections up to 600 volts. It has three voltage channels and four current channels. That fourth current channel would be for maybe neutral loading and things like that to look at your neutral current. Um, so we do use an off the shelf standard 0 0.333 volt um, input for our current inputs. Uh, so you can buy CTs from Dranitz or you have the ability to use your own off the shelf third party CTs that support this input. This is a standard one. However, we'll warn you, just please choose a safe CT. In the United States, we recommend a UL listed CT. Our products are UL listed. This product is UL listed, as well as our accessories, including CTs are UL listed. So, um, so that, that's, a, that's a, an important thing to note. And the same for CE. Internationally, CE would be the reference. We are CE certified on our instruments as well as the, the, um, the CTs or CE reference. So again, this is a PQ disturbance detector um, that does have half cycle recording capabilities of our more expensive products. It is not IEC 61000-4-30 compliant, but it does share some of the techniques and measurement capabilities and measurement methods of that. And similar to harmonics, it follows the same basic fundamentals of IEEE 519 2014, as well as um, 61000-4-7, but is not compliant with these standards. So this is a reference, basic reference instrument for harmonics and power quality, but it does provide that ability for you as well. So this does have a web enabled interface. In fact, that's what Ken, I'm sorry, Thurman is gonna focus on during his demonstration. Uh, you can use any tablet, any smartphone, any laptop, any desktop that has connectivity to the instrument. You plug the instrument into an ethernet network, then you gain all the capabilities of that network, whether it be direct connect to your computer or something up on a company network or on the internet. As long as you can see it on the network, you can control it and download the data. It does come with free unlicensed DranView software. It's called DranView XP. Uh, when you purchase the instrument, uh, we do not ship you the software. We give you a little note with a website to go download the software from our website. So again, DranView XP is free and unlicensed. However, DranView, I'm sorry, Dran Expert data is part of DranView. Our, we, we had a recent update on DranView that is now compatible with Dran Expert data. So if you're a current DranView user, just do an auto update on DranView or go to our website and not download the latest version and then it'll become Dran Expert compliant. Uh, just a quick, a couple of quick things. Dran Expert does have a seven hour battery runtime, automatic wiring configuration detection. So it'll tell you if it thinks that you are miswired. Um, it is ethernet and USB capable. It does have Modbus capabilities and BACnet capabilities as well as its UL and CE compliant. So major applications in the sky's the limit. This is an energy monitor and a logger. So for energy audits, demand side management, basic power quality surveys, even check metering due to its accuracy, sub metering. You can use this for alternative energy to look at direction of flow, cost allocation, load profiling, power factor correction studies. It's a whole bunch of applications that are out there for use in a whole bunch of instruments. So. 
Um, this is a new product where uh, we have demonstration data to show you that's uh, live um, taken on the product. We're, we're looking for feedback from our customers now to get these specific applications and we'll develop application notes for this. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Thurman. He's going to go through the live interface and then we'll come back and we'll see some data and see how it appears in Drandview. So, all right, Thurman, you would just want to grab that, please. Uh, thank you, Ross. Uh, if you permit me to share my screen, uh, have it. I'll see. go ahead and uh, proceed. Just bear with me here. Okay. All right. You can see our video on there for the uh, um, for sharing uh, for the uh, the Dran expert. So get there. Right. Thank you, Ross. Appreciate that. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to where you are. Uh, I'm going to spend uh, a little time uh, going through a, a typical setup of Dran Expert. Just let me clean up my screen here, get rid of some of this stuff. Okay, so uh, the great thing about, one of the great things about Dran Expert is the tools that are required to uh, to interface with the instrument. And, and what I mean by great is simply uh, the only tool that you really need is a desktop, uh, your laptop computer, uh, Ethernet connection, and a web browser. So the point there, the benefit there is that, no, I don't need any uh, PC software or app or anything like that to establish a link to the instrument uh, for setup uh, uh, to collect data for a monitoring session. Uh, in this example here, hopefully everyone can see my screen here. Um, here I'm using uh, Google Chrome is my favorite uh, web browser that I use. Uh, after you have established a link to the instrument, uh, there is utilities, uh, utility which will allow you to set the instrument's IP address. If you have to set, uh, have a unique IP address for a given application, uh, once you have an IP address uh, set in the instrument, as you see here in the status page, then using your web browser, you simply establish what we call the HTTP connection. When you have a successful link, you'll be prompted for a username and password. Yes, the system does have security. So those that need to implement security as far as logging on to a particular instrument, the system does have provisions for that. Uh, once you've logged on to the instrument, uh, you have these functions here across the top and obviously information allows us to see what's going on with the instrument at that particular time. Uh, things that are pretty intuitive such as serial numbers, the operating system. Uh, if you are currently in a monitoring session, uh, the survey name that you give it uh, we always recommend using a survey name because that better allows you to organize the data the monitoring status, if, is it on or off? Uh, you have the ability to turn the monitoring on or off remotely. Uh, and then other things you have, which are pretty, uh, pretty intuitive. Now, uh, to begin a monitoring setup, uh, you simply go to setup and from the drop down here, uh, the first place you would start that I would start would be instrument setup. And you know, obviously here, uh, it gives you a warning that monitoring, when monitoring is on, you can't edit any changes, can't make any changes. But for this, in this example here, we'll just continue on. Uh, you have your Ethernet information here. You know, that's pretty straightforward for a network connection. Uh, your date and time. You can actually change the input channel colors. One of the favorite things that I like to do is I like to match the channels with my uh, cable set. Uh, the cable set that comes with the instrument has the different colors, the uh, red, red, yellow, and blue. Uh, so if you wanna coordinate the input channels with your cable set, you can certainly do that. In fact, why don't we do this? And I turn the monitoring off. It's not gonna hurt us at this point. So monitoring is now off. It now acknowledges that monitoring is off. So it's really that straightforward. Uh, incidentally, you can turn monitoring off on the instrument itself. It has a button which you can turn monitoring on or off. So if the question comes up, do I have to establish a link to turn monitoring on and off? The answer is no, you don't. You can do it locally as well. So if we revisit our 
set up. These fields are now, uh, we can now edit these fields here. And again, if I wanted to change the channel color, I can simply just go to the drop down and I can, and you can see the different uh, combinations that you have as far as colors, the options. Uh, here, I can control how much information goes into the database, so to speak. Uh, the default in which it will record data before it begins a new data file is 31 days. But I can go to the drop down here and choose uh, the capacity of a data file. Uh, you might have an application where maybe you only want to record for one hour and you're doing something specific. Maybe it's just one day, or maybe it's one year. So you have the option of selecting uh, the drop downs here. Um, and then how long to keep the data files around. Uh, we typically use three months, but again, you have the option of selecting how long a data file is kept before it's purged. So a quick review is these two lines revert, uh, mean how large of a data file do I collect? It can be one day, four hours. How long I keep the data file around before the instrument purges the, the file. The instrument has eight gigabytes of storage. So that is a lot of storage for a, a logger. Uh, so you have more than enough uh, storage capacity. Uh, for those that are might use the instrument as far as BACnet, using BACnet IP, uh, here's where you would enter the uh, information. You know, obviously, you enable it. And then you add what is called a device ID that's typically used in BACnet. For those that are using the instrument as a Modbus slave, uh, you simply enable it and you use the uh, Modbus port. The standard Modbus port, by the way, is 502. Uh, and you would edit, edit those values there. And then it's just a matter of just submitting the changes once you've uh, edited the screen to your liking or for the application. Uh, the next step is the what we call the survey setup. This is where you really get into the meat of setting up the instrument. Uh, a lot of it is very intuitive. Uh, for example, the survey name. As I mentioned earlier, it's always recommended that you give the survey a name. Another way you can think of a survey is a monitoring session. You want to give it a name that allows you to better organize the data when you're doing it in post. And then you have things as such as the frequency. Obviously, we can support frequencies other than 60 hertz. You can see the drop down for 60 hertz. Circuit types, uh, the drop down for circuit types. You can see the various circuit types that we support. And by the way, these are the most common circuit types that you're going to encounter. Your deltas, your Ys, and what is delta two probe or delta three probe. Um, this relates to it, what Ross alluded to earlier. Uh, you know, the, the instrument's main purpose is an energy logger, data logger, and PQ detector. Uh, but it has maybe some of the characteristics as more of our advanced uh, uh, products, such as allowing us to set uh, a number of pre-trigger cycles when it records falls. And uh, you can almost kind of relate to this as recording death. So, when, it, when there's a trigger occurs, I'm going to include a certain number of pre-trigger cycles, and then I'm going to uh, basically create a window. So when I trigger, I have a window. What is the maximum window? And you can see in this case, this window is 600 cycles. So maybe in some other applications, other than your standard PQ, you might be able to use it uh, as long as it falls within, within the 600 cycle window. Uh, most of the time, users will simply leave it at its default, but there is some options there, and that's kind of like a takeaway from our more advanced instrumentation. Uh, as far as the triggers, you would start with a nominal. Okay, that nominal can be 120, can be 277, whatever the uh, application calls for. You can see the range from 90 volts to 600 volts, PT, ratios again you know this instrument typically is used in what we call low voltage applications which is up to 600 volts but uh, if you have medium and high voltage applications you can use this as well but obviously you're not going to connect medium and high voltages direct to the instrument you're going to go through you know pts or voltage dividers 
these devices have scale factors, if you will, or ratios, and that's where you would enter the values here. Uh, sequence uh, error uh, enable, this allows you, you know, your typical, what we call reverse uh, sequence. You can have the instrument actually detect when it's just the opposite of that. Uh, enabling limits, so this turns on default recording, if you will. And it's about just simply setting a percent of your nominal, it uses the, in this case here, nominal 120. And then our trigger limits is 105. So you can think of this in terms as 5% above 120, that's our upper limit. And then that 90%, 10% below 120 is our lower limit. So now we've defined our window. Uh, anything that goes outside that window, an RMS variation, of course, we use half cycle resolution that goes outside that window, it's detected as a fault. Uh, we can change our input order. So you, there's options here of changing the input order. Typically, it's going to be an ABC, but in some cases, you may want to change that. So you can see it's, it's pretty versatile in that regard. Uh, just as we can record, um, and then for your current, obviously, what's the nominal current? In this setup here, we're actually using, uh, we have lower range current probes that are piggybacked on existing CTs. And so in this setup, the way it works is that we pick a nominal, what's our nominal current. That would be used for any type of triggering if we want to trigger on current faults. But as far as how do we program the instrument when we're piggybacking off existing CTs or even PTs is the probe that you're using, which DRAND expert probe are you using? In this case, we're using a 20 amp probe. The ratio of the existing CT that we're piggybacking off, and you can see this is your, this is a typical 3000 to five amp CT. So once we add this information here in these three windows, DRAN expert takes care of the rest as, as, as far as providing us with the correct amperage readings. If we're going to enable current limits, eh, some, in some cases you may want to do that. Most cases you don't, it, it's usually the voltage triggers that most people are concerned about. But in cases in which you want to uh, enable current triggers, it's just a matter of selecting the appropriate nominal and then uh, setting your high and low limits. That's basically what these windows are doing. Obviously, you have to enable it in order to set high and low limits. And, and so from these windows here, we're basically seeing the fault recording portion of DRAN Expert, the PQ detection portion of it, if you will. But the other side of DRAN Expert is his ability to be a logger and uh, an energy logger as well. And so this section here, basically allows us to set that up. Are we using it for energy logging? If we are, we wanna make sure that we have this box here enabled. What are we, what's our demand interval? 15 minutes is usually industry standard using a five minute sub interval, uh, but there's, uh, there's options in which you may wanna change that. Do we have a demand limit that we want the instrument to notify whenever we go above a demand limit? You know, an example of that is that if you want to kind of keep control of your demand limit, that's that peak demand. That's the large part of your utility bill uh, that you get. So if you have an application in which you're tracking that and you want to know when you hit the, a peak demand limit, this is where you would enter that information. Incidentally, the instrument has uh, a set of LEDs and one of those LEDs refers to demand limit. Uh, just simply walking up to the instrument and seeing if the LED is red or green will indicate if you're within your demand uh, limits or not. So that's a, a neat little uh, feature that the instrument has. And then, of course, we have uh, data logging. In the data logging world, they're called journals. And so you have a journal interval. You can see in this instance here, we're using a one second interval in which it goes out and um, and collect journal data. Uh, some people refer to it as data logs. It's a data set in which an instrument goes out and provide you know, your basic meter readings, your harmonics, uh, et cetera. Uh, there's even more, 
what I would call more of an advanced option where maybe you want to, uh, in addition to journals, uh, you want to take snapshots of waveforms. And, you know, it's a matter of enabling it and then choosing an appropriate interval. And the instrument will go out and uh, take a waveform snapshot at the user defined interval. Once you've uh, configured the in this this page for a given application, uh, then it's just submitting the changes and changes are uploaded to the instrument. The instrument does have obviously you know, any meter or monitor worth this salt is going to have some function of real time meters, and you know Duran Expert follows that path as well. To get access to that, you just simply go to meters. And then here's uh, real-time meters. Incidentally, this meter is on our mains. It's the main in, uh, uh, coming into our headquarters here in Edison, New Jersey. And you can see all this is real-time value. So we give you your energy, okay, as well as the individual legs and the totals so is the energy usage. You can see the different parameters that we provide for energy. Uh, one of the things that was mentioned before it's bi-directional, so we keep track of forward and reverse watt hours, uh, which is very useful in, in energy management applications. Uh, here, what I would call your basic meter readings, you know, your volts, your amps, your watts, your frequency. And here you can see, because this is a Y setup, we have a three-phase Y on our entrance. You can basically see the three phases of voltage and current. Um, all this is really pretty intuitive. You can see the various different parameters. Uh, and as we scroll down, you have your neutral values and then our demand. So all this is fairly straightforward, fairly intuitive uh, as far as what the numbers mean. Uh, and this is all available in real time. And again, the tool that I'm using is laptop computer, ethernet cable, web browser, that's it. Uh, I'm not using any other any other apps uh, to get this data. And then as far as the uh, the storage of data, as I mentioned earlier, the instrument has eight gigabytes of storage, which again, is a lot of storage for data. So ultimately the question comes, what methods do we have of getting the data from the instrument to our software? In this case, as Ross mentioned earlier, there's two software options. There's DRAMView XP, and then of course there's DRAMView. If you're already a DRAMView user, you know, after you update DRAMView to the current version, it is now compatible with reading uh, DRAN Expert data. So how do I get the data to DRAN XP or DRAMView? And from the, from the um, dropdown here, under list files, if I'm using a direct connect, so I've established a connection to the instrument. I want to download files. I simply go to list files. And this particular instrument here, you can see there's a, a, a lots of files here that the instrument has collected over a long period of time. But what you're going to look for is the file that's relevant to your application. It's going to have this date code here in which the file was created and the last time the file was written to and to simply download that, that particular file, you just select the file and you initiate the download by selecting, it actually zips and downloads the file. It presents you with a file save as window, you direct it where you want the file save, and then you unzip it later on and then you use the software to read it. Um, so it's really that straightforward as far as getting data through a remote link. If there are multiple files that you want to download, then you just simply just check off the files that you want. And then you use the option, download and zip selected files. You also can do some housekeeping here where you can delete files. So you have that those functions as well. And then any, um, um, if you need to restart the instrument or do any uh, upload firmware, uh, you can do that under what we call factory, the drop down, you know, update the firmware. We can restore the instrument back to factory defaults, keep the IP or, or, or delete the IP. We can restart. You can change the password from its uh, factory default. If you want to add a, another layer of security, you can certainly do that.
So, uh, but that is a that is a tour of the of the instruments interface, and and as you can see, it, it's it's really fairly straightforward. It's a simplified set of of our more advanced uh, monitors, but just as effective as far as recording data logs, energy data, and faults. So. I'm going to, Ross has some examples that he's gonna show you in DRAMView or DRAMView XP. So I am going to turn uh, turn it back over to Ross. All right, thank you, Thurman, nice job. Um, I just shared a DRAMView screen. It's, uh, let me go switch back to it for some reason. That's not good. Let me stop share. I, I gotta stop share. All right, yeah, you gotta, yeah, it's go. letting me share, but I'm gonna stop share first. Let's go do that real quick. You can see our zoom in of, Trent expert there. And there we go. Thank you. Okay. And thanks for your patience, folks. We're running a few minutes behind here today. Uh, let me go through a Dran expert file. And it, you know, what I described on just the basics of DranView and the windows and the panes, that all applies for DranView XP as, as well as the full DranView. Um, and this did not change. Hang on a second. Just bear with me. Go to your tab. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, did it change? No. There it goes. I'm sorry. I'm clicking and my computer wasn't responding. I apologize. So here's Dran Expert data. We're not going to take too much time on this. Uh, when you talk about DranView XP, it works identically to DranView, the full DranView Pro Enterprise. It just doesn't have as many capabilities. But how you navigate, how you load files is the same. And to continue Thurman's story, he downloaded the file from Dran Expert. It's in a different file format um, than our HTTPQ products. It downloaded it using the web browser and it just puts it in a folder in your computer, on your computer, it could be your desktop, whatever it may be. Then you could either double click on that, fo that file or go file open from DranView and then just open that file the exact way you would open any file within DranView. When you bring it up, you're gonna see just everything that's in that file. You have the ability to control what parameters you'd like to see, the same way that DranView has worked before. I have chosen the things that are important to a, a uh, data logging survey or a logger survey. So I'm looking at my loading, my current on each phase, and I'm also looking at my total demand. I could be plotting energy, I could be plotting other things as well, but those are the ones that I chose. And you could see my energy on, I'm sorry, my, my current on phase A, my current on phase B, my current on phase C, and my demand for my survey. And as Sturman mentioned, this data is from the same instrument that he was demonstrating. And this is from our service entrance. So this is a, uh, I believe this is the end of a Thursday going into a Friday into a weekend over here for the Dranitz facility. All right, so this is just our, our current loading and our energy for that survey. Um, or demand for that survey, we could see energy. Now on the right here, uh, Thurman mentioned that you can record wave shape snapshots for the instrument. So I can see them recorded at a 10 minute interval in this file, I believe it's 10 minute interval, and you can see these wave shapes recorded. In addition, if you have an event, and there's a couple current trigger events here. Let me see if I can get it. In fact, I have to just change the properties here to look at the RMS of a, uh, of a waveform. So let me just look at voltage and current. And you can see them. These are current events that happen to be recorded because we set a fairly low current limit just for some tests. And you can see this is when the current exceeded the RMS threshold that, um, that Thurman was explaining. And this is a corresponding voltage at that time. I have just phase A here for voltage and current and I can make any phase. I can do A, B, C as well and, and, and parallel them. So. Bottom line is DranView has the same capabilities or the display capabilities for just uh, trending and, and looking at the details of an event. But the focus here is the data from Dran Expert, which of course is uh, basically loading information and that RMS power quality information as well. All right, you have that full capability within DranView, as well as the, a, the ability to have a, a power report, an energy report that was built into the full DranView, and that's the, the main report that's available within DranView XP. Again, that's the free software that comes along with DranXP.